Do people have the right to smoke in public? My father used to smoke. He got very ill. The doctor told him that he had to quit smoking. My father tried for a long time to quit. It was very difficult for him. Smoking is an addiction. After many months, my father finally gave up smoking, but he still craved a cigarette once in a while. He says that quitting smoking is the hardest thing that he has ever done. When my father did smoke, he smoked everywhere. He smoked in restaurants, stores, and many public buildings. Now, you are not allowed to smoke in a lot of public places. When my father smoked, the rules were not so strict. People could smoke just about anywhere. It really wasn't fair to the people who didn't smoke. Their clothes always smelled like smoke, and they breathed in secondhand smoke. Some people think that the secondhand smoke is actually worse for you than if you smoke yourself. People would smoke in their houses. And very young children would inhale the smoke that was in the air. Some people still smoke in their houses, and their children breathe in the smoke. Some restaurants have areas for smokers and non-smokers, but usually the smoke drifts from one area to the other. There are some businesses that have banned smoking altogether. Personally, I think that smoking in public places should be completely banned. I don't think that I should have to breathe in another person's smoke if I choose not to smoke myself. It wouldn't be fair for a non-smoker to get lung cancer because they had to be in a place where smokers were allowed to light up. I know that smoking is a powerful addiction and that it is very difficult to quit, but smokers should restrict their smoking to places where there is nobody else around. Lung cancer is an awful disease. Nobody should have to suffer with lung cancer. People should be educated about the dangers of smoking. Smoking should be banned in public places, but eventually, I would like to believe that fewer people will smoke. It would be nice to live in a smoke-free environment. My favorite bedtime story. Every night when I was little, my mother would read me a bedtime story. My favorite story was Tom's Midnight Garden. This was a story by Philippa Pierce. It was quite a long book, and it took quite a few nights for my mother to read the entire book to me. In Tom's Midnight Garden, Tom moves to the city to stay with his aunt and uncle. He is very bored at their apartment. They have no children, so Tom has nothing to do. One night, the clock strikes thirteen times. Tom knows that this is impossible. A clock can only strike up to twelve times. He sneaks downstairs and goes outside. When he goes outside, there is a wonderful garden that wasn't there the day before. The next day, Tom goes outside and finds there is no garden. The garden only seems to appear at night. Every night, Tom slips out to this wonderful garden and meets some people in the garden. He meets a girl named Hattie. Hattie and Tom become very good friends in this garden. Some very strange things happen in this book. There are some coincidences that keep you guessing about what is really going on. The surprise ending is wonderful. I really enjoyed Tom's Midnight Garden, and I was very sad when my mother and I came to the end of the book. I felt that I had visited the magical garden with Tom. It is a book that I will remember all my life. If I found a magic lamp. 
If I was walking down the beach one day and I happened to bump my toe on a magic lamp, I would pick it up and rub it. If it was a real magic lamp, but I don't believe that there really is a magic lamp, a genie would pop out in a cloud of smoke and he would call me master. He would say that he would grant me three wishes. I would have to think very hard about those wishes because I wouldn't want to waste them. I don't think I'd want millions of dollars. Money doesn't buy happiness, or so they say. I might wish for good health because if your health isn't good, you won't be able to enjoy anything. Some people might wish for beauty, but beauty is only skin deep. Some people would wish for a mansion or a beautiful car or a big boat. I don't want any of those things. Some people would want fame. Some people would want talent. Some people would wish for happiness. That might be a good thing to wish for. Yes, maybe I'd wish for health and happiness, but what would my third wish be? I could wish for something enormous, something global. I could wish for world peace. That would be a wonderful thing if somebody could grant me that. Yes, that would probably be my third wish. It's too bad there aren't any genies inside magic lamps. I won't get my three wishes. I can still work toward getting my wishes. I can eat well and exercise to stay healthy. I can be involved with a lot of things and be with my friends to stay happy. I can volunteer my time to different organizations to help achieve world peace. I can do my fair share in my community to help others. That's how I can get my three wishes, not through a magic lamp. I can only get what I want through self determination and hard work. That is the key to getting your wishes fulfilled. Superstitions. I am not superstitious, are you? Yesterday was Friday the 13th. Some people think that Friday the 13th is an unlucky day. I think that it is just like any other day. Some people believe that if a black cat crosses your path, you will have bad luck. I don't believe that either. My mother always gets upset if I open an umbrella in the house. She says that is bad luck. She is probably right about that one because an open umbrella would take up a lot of space and you might knock things over. If your left hand is itchy, you are supposed to get money. I have had an itchy left hand before, but I haven't received any money because of it. It is bad luck to walk under a ladder. That is probably true because you might knock somebody off the ladder or have a can of paint fall on top of you. If you are acting in a play, it is bad luck if someone says good luck to you. This is very confusing. You are supposed to tell an actor to break a leg. It doesn't mean that you want the actor to break his leg, it means good luck to the actor. Actors have a lot of superstitions that are very unusual. I am not superstitious. I don't believe in superstitions at all. It is just fun to learn about superstitions. Some of them are very old and have been passed down from generation to generation. I once did a project at school on superstitions. It was a very interesting topic and I got a good mark for it. Help. Did you ever have to call for help? Were you ever in a situation that was an emergency? It is good to know what to do in case of an emergency. 
you should always know how to get in touch with the police and fire departments. I have read stories where very young boys or girls have called the police and saved their friends or family members' lives because they knew just who to get a hold of. If you see a fire, you should call the fire department. A lot of tragedies have been prevented because the calls have been made quickly. It is important that emergency vehicles arrive very quickly. That is why those vehicles have sirens. When their sirens go, it means to get out of the way. Policemen, firemen, and ambulance attendants are trained to handle very difficult situations. They often save people's lives. They go through a lot of training to become good at what they do. They never panic in emergencies. For your part, you should keep emergency numbers near the phone or know what the emergency numbers are. Where I live, there is a special number that you call for any emergency. We teach that number to everyone, even very tiny children. It is important to remain calm if you need help. If you call an emergency number, you have to be able to speak clearly and tell the person you are talking to exactly what the problem is. I hope you are never in an emergency situation, but it is a good idea to be prepared. The Peach Orchard When I was very young, I lived near a peach orchard. Now there is a park where the orchard used to be. I always remember the peach orchard because my grandmother and I used to go there and pick peaches. The owner of the orchard would let all the neighbors pick peaches. It's not the fact that I used to get many ripe, tasty peaches that I remember. It's the time that I used to spend with my grandmother that I remember. My grandmother was very old, but she was very healthy. She used to walk a lot. I think that is what kept her fit. She had a lot of energy, so she liked to go to a lot of places. She would get a fruit basket, and then she would ask me if I wanted to go to the orchard. I always said yes because I enjoyed walking through the orchard on a sunny day. We never climbed up on a ladder to reach the peaches. We just reached for the low-hanging fruit. My grandmother and I used to talk all the time that we were out there. It was nice to spend time with her. She told me many stories about when she was a young girl. We laughed and got to know each other better. My grandmother only visited us during the summer. She lived in California, and I lived in Niagara Falls, so we didn't get to spend a lot of time with each other. We enjoyed the hot summer days in the orchard. You could smell the peaches, and the bees buzzed lazily by us. My grandmother would point out different insects and birds to me. I learned a lot about nature from her. We would end up with a big basket of peaches. When we got home, my mother would wash the peaches, and often she would bake a peach pie for us. Nobody bakes a peach pie like my mother. It's good to have memories like that. Childhood memories of time spent with my grandmother are very precious to me. Sometimes it's just the simple things that you do in life that leave you with the nicest memories. Giving a speech. I had to give a speech last week. I gave a speech to three hundred people. I had to speak in front of a group of students. I had to tell them about a campaign that we were having to raise money for cancer research. Giving a speech can be a difficult thing. When you stand in front of a big crowd, you can get very nervous. Some people feel like they have weak knees. Their legs feel as if they are made of rubber. Their heart beats very hard inside of their chest. Their palms get sweaty. Some people even become short of breath. For some people, giving a speech is their worst fear. When you give a speech, everyone is looking at you. They are waiting to hear what you have to say. When you have three hundred people looking at you, you have six hundred eyes that are on you. It is a little frightening when you think of it that way. 
Before I give a speech, I take three big breaths. I calm myself and I remind myself that what I have to say is important. I like to be sure of what I am going to say, so I practice my speech in front of a mirror at home. I like to look like I am relaxed and friendly. They say that practice makes perfect. So the more speeches that you give, the better you will become at it. Whenever I have to give a speech, I imagine that the audience is just one big person. I look out into the audience until I find a friendly, smiling face. I focus on that person and I pretend that I am just talking to them. I have become used to giving speeches. I am more relaxed now than I used to be. People tell me that I do not look nervous at all. I like to hear that. Sometimes I do feel a little flutter of nervousness, but I just ignore it and do the best that I can. Giving a speech is not as scary as it appears to be. Anyone can do it with a little practice. Moving to another country. My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life, and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so he had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes, in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. Look for the beauty. I have learned that things don't always go the way that they were planned. If something doesn't happen the way that I want it to, I try to make the best of the situation. I always try to find something good in everything that happens. Last year, I broke my ankle when I was walking on an icy sidewalk. At first, I was very upset. I was missing school, and there was a party that I wanted to go to. I couldn't do very much of anything. My ankle was very sore. I stayed home and I read a book. It was an excellent book and one that I probably would not have had time to read under normal circumstances. My friends brought my homework to my house, and we had some really nice visits while they were here. I had to accept the fact that I couldn't go anywhere on my broken ankle, so I made the best of a bad situation. Once I lost my way when I was out camping, I ended up in a very large field. I was afraid that nobody would find me, but I calmed myself down and took time to examine all the interesting wild flowers in the field. My family did find me. They were surprised at how calm I was. I have learned that there is something valuable inside every adventure and something beautiful inside every person. We had a new boy who came into our class. His clothes weren't in style, and he was not particularly handsome. Some of the boys and girls made fun of him. Sometimes people can be really cruel. He seemed to handle it all right, but inside, I knew that it must hurt. Some of my friends and I invited him out with us. We found out that he had a terrific sense of humor, and he is probably one of the nicest people that I have ever met. He has since become one of my best friends. It makes me ashamed when someone that I know judges someone by how they look. It isn't fair to do that. You'll find that something good comes out of almost every situation. You'll find something good about almost everyone that you meet if you look hard enough. If something doesn't work out the way you planned it, just make the best of the situation. Look for the beauty in everything. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. 
It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I love that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll, no matter how worn out she is. I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. I am curious. I am curious about many things. I would like to find the answers to a lot of questions that I have. What holds the stars up in the sky? Why does ice form on the top of the lake when it is cold? Is there life on other planets? Why do we not fall off the face of the earth? How do caterpillars turn into butterflies? All of these things are mysteries to me. There are so many questions that are unanswered. I think I should go to the library and get a book to find out why people grow old. What makes a television work? I also want to know where electricity comes from. Who is the strongest person in the world? Who is the smartest person in the world? Why do some people have blonde hair and some people have black hair? Why do people in different countries speak different languages? Why do people have to die? Why are no two snowflakes alike? What makes people fall in love? What makes the rivers run? Why does the sun rise every morning? How did the oceans form? Why did the dinosaurs vanish from the earth? I wonder if I'll ever find out the answers to all of my questions. I think I'll have to study hard and stay in school to find out everything that I want to know. Some questions never get answered. It is good to be curious. People who are curious about things are the ones who learn a lot, and some curious people go on to invent things and make important discoveries. Creative people. Some people are just born to create. That's what I think. Some people just have the need to write stories, compose beautiful music, or paint pictures. Creativity seems to be inside them, and they need to let it out. It's good that we have people like that. Composers like Mozart and Chopin have given us music that is incredibly beautiful. It's not just the classical composers who have given us great pieces of music. There are modern composers who have written great songs, also. Elton John is an example of someone who has composed many wonderful songs. Andrew Lloyd Webber has given us some very popular musicals like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many talented and creative people in this world. When you visit an art gallery, you marvel at how artists are able to recreate realism. Or make up something that seems totally unreal yet beautiful. The American artist Norman Rockwell painted some pictures that actually look like photographs. He tried to portray life as it was in America. Through his paintings, one can get a good sense of American life through the years. On the other hand, artists like Jackson Pollock did not portray realism. Jackson Pollock painted abstract pictures. His paintings are just as good as Norman Rockwell's, but they are entirely different. Some books that we read are classics, 
Mark Twain portrayed American life through his characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Charles Dickens brought Victorian England to life through his books. Most people are familiar with his Christmas Carol, where the mean and miserable Scrooge learns the true meaning of Christmas. People don't have to read the classics. There are modern writers who entertain readers through their stories. Stephen King has written a number of horror stories. Some of his books have even been made into movies. We are lucky to have creative people who share their gifts with us. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we can all share. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we all can share. Career choices. What do you want to be when you grow up? There are so many things that you can be. You might want to work in the field of law. You could be a police officer. You could be a judge or a lawyer. Maybe you'd like to work in the food industry. You could be a cook or a waitress. You might want to manage a hotel dining room. Perhaps you would want to do room service in a hotel. You could be a chef and make fancy meals for people. Maybe show business is what you'd like to be involved in. You could act in television shows or movies. You could sing or play an instrument in a band. If you like to help people. You could go into medicine. You could be a doctor or a nurse. You might be a surgeon and operate on people. There are other jobs in the field of medicine too. You could be an X-ray technician or a lab technician. It takes a lot of education to be a doctor. Maybe you would rather be a teacher. You could teach in a primary school or a high school. If you don't want to work with children, you could become a professor at a university. There are hundreds of other jobs to choose from too. You might want to fix cars or work in a store. You could be a dentist or a veterinarian. You could be a janitor or a zookeeper. There are so many jobs that I just can't name them all. Maybe you'd like to be a minister or an organist at a church. You could be a babysitter or a shop clerk. You might be interested in being an astronaut or a baker. You could work in a bank or at a shop. You could work on a construction crew and build roads and houses. Maybe you'd rather decorate the houses, so you could become an interior decorator. You could cut hair or be a driving instructor. The list is endless. There are even jobs that you may never have heard about. The choice is yours. You just choose whatever you want to be and do your best to become that. I could go on forever. You could work in a library. You could be a factory worker or a fisherman. You could make clothes or build bridges. You could wash windows or be a bricklayer. The possibilities are endless. I need glasses. I have been having trouble seeing the blackboard. Everything is blurry. I keep getting headaches. I told my mother about it, and she made an appointment with the optometrist. I went to a place where they made me read words and letters on a chart. Some of the words were big, and some were very small. I tried to read everything, but sometimes I couldn't see some of the small letters. The optometrist would cover one of my eyes while I read the chart. Then. She would cover my other eye. She even put some drops in my eyes. I asked the optometrist if I had passed or failed the test. She laughed and said it wasn't that kind of test that you passed or failed. She was just trying to find out if I needed glasses. I did need glasses. My mother and I looked around. There were many pairs of frames. I wanted something that was in style. 
I tried on many pairs of frames. Some of them looked good on me, and some of them looked really funny on me. I finally chose a frame that was my favorite. I gave them to a lady who did some measurements. She told me to come back on Friday to get my glasses. On Friday, I got my glasses. My friends liked them. They said I looked smart in my glasses. I wore them to school on Monday, and I was able to see the blackboard clearly. I didn't realize how much I hadn't been able to see. Now I don't get headaches anymore. I'm glad that I have my glasses. Everything is a lot clearer now. I am clumsy. My mother says that I am clumsy. My father says that I am clumsy. I know that I am clumsy. I do things all the time that are clumsy. I fall down for no reason at all. If there is a crack in the sidewalk, I will be sure to trip on it and fall down. If I carry a plate of food in the cafeteria, I almost always either drop it or bump into someone with it. I don't try to do these things. It just happens. When I drink juice, I miss my mouth and get juice all over my shirt. I always have something spilled on my clothes. Last week I opened a jar of peanut butter. The jar flew out of my hands and landed upside down on the floor. There was a big glob of peanut butter on the floor. Yesterday I knocked over the sugar bowl. There was a big sticky mess on the floor. I bump my head when I get into the car. I rip my pants on things. I lose my money out of my pockets. I step on the cat's tail. I always feel bad when I do that because the cat thinks I don't love her. I don't mean to do these things. I am just a clumsy person. My parents tell me to slow down. I am always in a hurry. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy. Maybe it's just the stage that I'm going through. If it is, I hope it is over soon. Being clumsy is no fun at all. Home alone. I remember the first time that my parents left me home alone. I was very grown up, and I thought that I would be just fine. I was fine for a while. I watched television and had something to eat. I called my friend on the phone and we talked for a while. Then I sat down to read a book. The house was quiet, very quiet. I found myself listening very carefully. I heard a tap, tap, tapping noise. I wondered where it was coming from. It seemed to be coming from the window. I turned out the lights so that nobody would see me, and I peeked out the window carefully. I was expecting to see a robber tapping at my window. There was nobody there. It was just a tree branch swaying in the breeze and tapping at my window. I felt silly. I turned on the lights and sat back down to read my book. A few minutes later, I heard some creaking noises. I listened carefully. Then, I heard a clunking noise. I think it might have been the furnace. Then there was a whirring noise. My imagination began to play tricks on me. I was imagining that there were all kinds of creatures in the house. I told myself to grow up. I wouldn't let my imagination run away with me. I was glad when my parents got home. I told them about all the noises that I had heard. My parents laughed and said that all houses make noises. We're usually just so busy that we don't hear all the noises that go on. I have stayed home alone many times now. I just ignore all the little creaks and noises that I hear. I'm still alert and listen for anything suspicious. But I know that there are lots of noises that are harmless. That tree that taps on my window still frightens me sometimes, but I'm a lot braver now than I was the first time that I stayed home alone. Family, what does the word family mean to you? The easiest way to define family is to talk about who you are related to. Usually, there is a mom. And a dad, and children who are brothers and sisters. This would be the core family. Then there is the extended family, which would include grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, 
nieces, and nephews, and in-laws. People married to your brothers or sisters, husband or wife. However, I think the word family has a much deeper meaning. The word family brings words to my mind like love, support, help, kindness, fun, love, trips, closeness, love, forgiving, sharing, love, understanding, respect, and love. You'll notice one word that is repeated over and over again, love. I believe if a family has real love for one another, they will be able to overcome any problems they may have. Actually, they may not have too many problems if they all love and respect one another. However, there are things that cannot be helped, like death, sickness, or accidents. It is during those hard times that a family's love helps them to go through those experiences. We had quite a few children in my family. There were brothers and sisters, which included an adopted brother and a number of foster children, too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun, and there were some times of tears, too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. My first job. My first real job was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co-op. That meant we could work part of the time instead of going to school. It would count as a credit towards our diploma. The place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them, too. One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big, long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience and helped me get my next job with the United States Navy. That was fun, too. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house, and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows, I think. We'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. 
I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear Dad yelling. Let's go. I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide, and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls: the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August. I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls, and I'll give you a tour. My hobby. Let's see. Today I might go fly a kite, or maybe go for a swim. It is hot outside, and I don't know what to do. My mum tells me that I should do something that I like doing on hot days. Since our house is nice and cool, I guess I'll stay inside and work on my hobby. My hobby is something that not a lot of people do. I make and collect bookmarks. To make my bookmarks, I use stickers and special art pencils to draw. I buy the stickers at a mall, usually in a card store. The art pencils are bought in an art store. To make the bookmarks, I start with a piece of paper. I measure out how big I want the bookmark to be with a ruler. I once made a bookmark so big that it couldn't even be used in a very big book. After I measure it, I draw a line so that I can cut it straight. Sometimes I use fancy scissors that cut zigzag or frills. Then I start to decorate them. I like to draw cartoons and flowers on my bookmarks. Sometimes I even put real flowers on them. A lot of the time, I write little sayings on the bookmarks. I like to give my bookmarks to friends and family. Sometimes I even sell my bookmarks to people. I like my hobby. I can draw whatever I want on the bookmarks. Maybe sometime in the future, I will be a famous bookmark maker, and even have my own store. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I'd travel the world. I would go to the highest mountain. I would swim the deepest sea. I would probably buy a lot of clothes because I love clothes. More than anything, though, I would want to visit Ireland. I want to see the rolling hills and the green, green grass that everyone talks about. When I think of Ireland, I think of where my family came from many years ago. I am almost all Irish. And I would love to see my family over in Ireland. If I had a million dollars, I would buy a Mustang or a Pontiac Sunbird car. I would buy a nice house with a big backyard and an outdoor and indoor pool. I would love to take my family wherever they wanted to go. I would buy them wonderful presents too. However, I know that money does not buy happiness. It does not buy you friends or family. It may bring some happiness only for the moment, but in the long run, your family is what will be there for you if you love them and are there for them. If I had to pick between a million dollars and my family, I would pick my family.
The million dollars is a nice dream, if that dream ever comes true, and I do get a lot of money. I hope I would use it wisely. A picnic. What a great day for a picnic! We're not only having a picnic; we're having a big bike ride too. We did this last year with a lot of friends. Also, it was really fun. We meet quite early in the morning in a pretty little town. The town is where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario in Canada. The town's name is Niagara on the Lake. Then all of the people, fifty or more, get on their bikes or rollerblades. We go on a bike path beside the river. The path we take is about eleven kilometers or six miles long. There are a lot of people using the path too. We usually stop for an ice cream treat near the end or where we turn around to go back to our cars. It is just before the park where we will have our picnic, and a steep hill. Many of the men and boys go up the hill. Most of the women and children go back to their cars. The ride takes about two hours plus whatever time we take at the ice cream store. After the ride is finished, we go to the park. We have a delicious potluck lunch. Potluck means everyone brings some food to share with the others. We eat, rest, talk, and laugh. After we've cleaned up, some of us climb the tower that is there, remembering a war at that place and its general. It is a steep climb, over one hundred steps. We usually end the day with a fun game of baseball or soccer. Finally, we pack up our stuff. Tired and dirty, we head for home with good memories swimming in our heads. Working in my yard, I live in a house that has a small yard around it. In my yard, there is a lawn and a garden. There is also a sidewalk that leads to my front door, and a driveway that leads to my garage. Throughout the year, I work to maintain my yard. During the summer, I cut the grass that grows in my yard using a lawnmower. I like the smell of the grass when it has just been cut. But it's better not to cut the grass too short. When the weather is dry, I also put water on the lawn and garden, so that the grass and flowers can grow. During the autumn, many leaves fall from the trees in my yard. I use a rake to collect the leaves from the lawn. Then I can put the leaves into bags. I can use the leaves to make fertilizer. When I was a kid. I didn't like the job of raking leaves, but now I don't mind it. Another job during the autumn is to remove flowers from the garden before cold weather arrives. During the winter, there is no work to do in the lawn or garden because they are covered in snow. But I need to keep the snow off my sidewalk and driveway. Whenever it snows, I use a shovel to clear the snow from the sidewalk and the driveway. Sometimes it snows a lot. If I didn't shovel the snow, it would soon be impossible to get into my house. During the spring, the snow melts. I clean up my yard by sweeping away the dirt and by removing weeds from the lawn and garden. I also put flowers back into the garden. It's nice to see them again after the long cold winter. When spring comes, the grass grows very quickly. So I need to cut the grass quite often. Working in the yard can be very satisfying work. It's so nice when the lawn and garden are looking green and healthy. Early morning. <gasps> Yawn. I'm so tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mum has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl," she says. "It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day." I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mum yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. "Okay, I'll get up," I shriek. 
The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face, and then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal any more. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye bye. The wedding. We went into the church and sat down. There were pretty flowers at the front. There was beautiful organ music playing. The church was full of people dressed up nicely. Everyone was waiting to see the beautiful bride walk up the aisle. A hush, an intake of breath. There she was. Oh, she was so beautiful. She had a lovely long white dress with pretty lace and beads. Her hair was swept up off from her face. There were curls flowing down her back. Instead of a veil, she had little flowers in her hair. Her bouquet of tiny flowers was very, very pretty. Her dad looked very proud of her. He looked just a little sad too. At the front of the church, the groom stood waiting. He had a beautiful, tender smile on his face. He took his bride's hand as her dad left her there. They smiled at each other. The minister read. Prayed and offered some words of advice to the lovely couple. Someone sang a pretty song. The groom slipped the simple wedding band on the bride's finger. She struggled a little to put a band on his finger. Pretty soon, the minister said they were now husband and wife. They kissed. We all stood as they walked down the aisle to live the rest of their lives together as Mister and Missus. We cried. The perfect place. There is a place in my mind that is pure. Everything there is beautiful. Many flowers grow, and the grass is very green. The clouds are always white and fluffy. The trees' branches sweep the earth floor. You can hear the sound of a waterfall. It is roaring with life. And the water races. A bird calls in the distance, and as you listen, the sound gets closer. A flapping quite near makes me turn and look. A great, magnificent eagle flies over my head. The strength I see in his powerful wings amazes me. I am never thirsty or hungry. I live off the beauty that surrounds me in this perfect place. I walk on trails that lead me to breathtaking places. The beach is my favorite spot to end up. The sand between my toes is soft and cool. I love to lie down on the sand. I watch the sun go down. Sometimes the sun is a brilliant orange. The world seems like it is on fire. Waves lull me to sleep. The seagulls wake me up. In this perfect place, I have learned so much. The animals and their homes are so precious. I have learned to respect the animals. They were here first. The sounds, smells, and sights are too perfect and full of life. There is no war here, no anger or stress. I don't have to worry about pollution or destruction. My perfect world exists only in my head.
Maybe if we all work hard, my fantasy can become real. Visiting the zoo. When I was a kid, I always enjoyed visiting the zoo. My family lived far away from the zoo, so we didn't go there very often. But whenever we went to the zoo, I always had a fun and interesting time. Some of the animals were very large. Of course, the elephants were huge, and they had such an unusual appearance, with their big ears and their long trunk and tusks. The giraffes were very tall, with long necks that reached high into the trees. Some of my favorite animals were big cats. The lions looked very powerful, with their big teeth and paws. The tigers were just as big and strong, with yellow and black stripes. But the bears were even larger than these cats. The polar bears, with their bright white fur, liked to swim through the water. The grizzly bears had brown fur and liked to roam around on land. The animals from Australia seemed very unusual. The kangaroos, with their strong legs and long tail, could jump great distances across the ground. The baby kangaroo could go inside its mother's pouch. Another Australian animal, the koala bear, crawled slowly in the trees where it ate leaves. The monkeys and apes were also very interesting. In many ways, they reminded me of people. Some of the monkeys were very small. They could use their arms, legs, and tail to swing through the trees. Some of the apes were very large. The gorilla was the largest of all. Sometimes a big gorilla would stand up and pound his fists on his chest. To see all the animals at the zoo took almost a whole day. By the end of the day, I was very tired from walking around, but I was also very happy to see all the amazing animals from places around the world. The dentist appointment. My dentist called my house the other day. He told me I needed my teeth cleaned. I set up an appointment to see him on Saturday. June the tenth. When I got to my dentist's office, I had to sit in the waiting room. There were other people ahead of me. They finally called my name. I went into his room and sat down on a big blue chair. They leaned it back. A bright light was turned on. It hurt my eyes, so I closed them. My dentist asked me to open my mouth. I did. I thought my mouth was very big. But he told me to open it even wider. Soon he began poking around to see if I had any cavities. He flossed my teeth and put fluoride around my teeth too. The fluoride tasted like bubble gum. I had to spit into a dish-like bowl. It squirted out water. My dentist kept asking me questions. I couldn't answer because there were weird tools in my mouth. When I tried answering back, he seemed to understand. Though his helper came into the room, she asked me to open my mouth again. I had to clamp down on something that felt like rubber. She put a big camera-type machine right next to my cheek. She did this on the other side of my face as well. They took two pictures of my teeth. It was really cool. The dentist told me my teeth were perfect. I didn't have any problems. I could go home. See you next year," he said. Daydream. Little Annie was very bored one lazy afternoon. She had nothing to do. She had already played with her brothers in the sandbox and had tea with them and her dollies too. She had baked chocolate chip cookies with her mom and even tasted one. They were very good, she thought. Now Annie was trying to figure out what else she could do to pass the day away. Little Annie decided that she would go to her favorite spot in the world, the green grassy field full of daisies beneath the great oak tree. She took a red and white blanket with her. She laid it down on the ground, and then she lay down on it. She lay there looking at the clouds, fluffy and white. She saw bunnies. 
huge gray elephants, and scary-looking crocodiles. Soon, little Annie was drifting in and out of clouds and reality. The clouds started dancing with her, begging her to come and play. She got up from her blanket and joined the clouds. They flew over rooftops of all of the village people, swam with the fish in the lake, and said hello to all of the birds that they passed by. Little Annie was having so much fun. The clouds had formed into a chariot, so little Annie could drive if she wanted to. She drove over a rainbow that was bright in the sky. Then she shot through the branches of her friend's spruce tree. Annie suddenly came to a stop. Hearing someone call her name, Annie looked around. She blinked once, twice, and finally everything came into focus. Her brother was tugging at her leg, wondering why she was staring into outer space with a big grin on her face. Oh, little Annie said, not really knowing that she had been sitting there. All along, my friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour, showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms. Where to get a picture ID card? How to get from one building to another? When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem. And I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. On Friday afternoons, she makes popcorn for everyone. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend. And talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. The musician. There once was a little girl named Rain Angel. She loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own. And looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano. She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her.
Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. The Circus Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants, too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store, and I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry, such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef. And sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta. Such as macaroni and spaghetti, and of course you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. A day at the beach. When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles.
Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand. Building sand castles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sand castle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket and feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach and enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day. Making cookies. Mmm, something smells good. My friend's mom is making cookies. They are chocolate chip, my favorite. I think I'll go home and ask my mom if we can make cookies too. I run all the way home and rush through the door. I yell, "Mom, mom!" She comes out from her bedroom, her eyes wide. "What?" she answers, a little worried. I breathlessly ask if we can please, pretty please, make cookies. She smiles and says, "I guess so." "Yes," I reply. First, mom tells me to get out the cooking stuff. So I get out the mixer and bowl, the measuring cups and spoons, and the cookie sheets. Then she tells me to get out the recipe book. I remind her that the recipe is on the chocolate chip package. Right, she says. Then she asks me to look at the recipe and get out the things we need, like flour, sugar, and butter. We set the oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we mix all the flour and other stuff ingredients together. Last, we added the chocolate chips. We drop the batter by big teaspoons full onto the cookie sheets. We set the timer for 12 minutes and just sit back and enjoy the good smell. The buzzer rings. We take the cookies out. Oh, do they look good! We don't even wait for them to cool down. Both mom and I get a big glass of cold milk and two big warm cookies each. Yum yum! Want to join us? I want to dye my hair green. Many of my friends have dyed their hair different colors. I don't mean normal hair colors like brown or black. My friends have dyed their hair orange, purple, and blue. I told my mother that I would like to dye my hair green. I explained to my mother that I would only use food coloring. The green would not last forever. My mother said that dyeing your hair was a silly fad. She said that I would not look good with green hair. I said that if I couldn't dye my hair green, maybe I could get a nose ring. My mother said no. I said that maybe a tattoo on my arm would be nice. My mother said no way. My mother said that she did some crazy things when she was a young girl. She said that she used to iron her hair to make it straight. That sounds quite boring to me. My friend Joan came over. Her hair is dyed bright pink. My father said, "Nice hair, Joan." I don't think that he really meant it. My mother says that when I am an adult, I can dye my hair whatever crazy color I like. But for now. She would like me to leave my hair its natural color. I tried to tell her that all my friends were doing it. My mother asked, "If all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you do it too?" I said, "No. I think I'll have to wait to have green hair. But maybe by the time I'm old enough to dye my hair green, I won't want it that color." My mother says that fads change all the time. One day something might be popular, and the next day it's not in style at all. I'll just have to live without green hair for now. I wonder what the fad will be next month. Why do people dislike other people?
Some people don't like other people just because they look different. I think that is silly. I don't think that it is fair to judge someone by the way they look. Some people look very nice, but they are mean or cruel. Some people look very ordinary, but they are incredibly nice. I remember when I was in grade one. I saw a girl across the room. She had a mean look on her face. I thought to myself that she was probably not a very nice person. I stayed away from her and played with the other children. Then we had to play a game, and the teacher said that she would pick partners for us. The teacher picked the girl with the mean face as my partner. I didn't think that the game would be much fun at all with a partner who seemed as mean as that girl. I walked up to her and said hello. The girl's face changed. She smiled at me and she began to talk to me. Her mean face disappeared. We had lots of fun playing the game. We laughed a lot and enjoyed each other's company. That girl became my best friend. Now, when I look at her, I see what is inside her. Sometimes she doesn't smile, but I know what she is like. She is a kind and funny person. I have learned that you can't judge a book by its cover. It is not fair to dislike someone just because they don't look like you want them to look. You have to get to know a person. It doesn't matter to me what color a person's skin is. It doesn't matter to me if they are short or tall, skinny or fat, or happy or sad looking. I judge people by how they treat me, and I try to treat people like I would want to be treated. The birthday gift. It is going to be my father's birthday. What can I give him? I don't have much money. I have looked all through the stores, and I have not found anything that I think he would like or that I can afford. I have thought very hard about what to buy for him. I thought that he might like some candy, but my father really doesn't eat many sweets. I thought that he might like a new shirt, but he has lots of clothes. I can't afford a new car or computer for him. I was watching him on the weekend. He cut the grass, washed the car, took out the garbage, weeded the garden, and watered the plants. I got an idea. I went to my room and took out some paper. I cut out pieces of paper and I wrote on them. I wrote on one piece of paper that I would wash the car every weekend for the summer. I wrote on another piece that I would take out the garbage every week for the summer. I also wrote that I would cut the grass, weed the garden, and water the plants every week for the summer. I made a birthday card for my dad and I put the pieces of paper inside it. I went downstairs and gave my gift to my dad. My dad thought that the gift was very thoughtful. He said that it was a gift from the heart. I did all those things for my dad all summer. He said that he had a lot of free time because I helped him so much. My dad and I are good friends. I don't mind doing things for him because I know that he is always there to help me out. A good gift doesn't have to be something that costs a lot. My dad says that the best gifts are the ones that show how much you care for the other person. I'm glad my dad liked his gift. New Year's Day. On New Year's Day, people start a new year. Many people make resolutions. They resolve to be better people. Some people decide that they will lose weight so that they can be healthier. Some people decide to give up smoking. They also want to be healthier. There are all kinds of resolutions that people make. Some people try not to lose their tempers. Some people say that they will work harder. There are people who try to give up bad habits. Every year, my brother says that he will stop biting his nails. He stops biting his nails in January, but by February, he always starts again. That is the thing about New Year's resolutions. People seldom keep them. Everybody starts out with good intentions, but it is very hard to stick with them. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I find that I just break them. I just work day by day to break my bad habits. I know that I eat too many sweets. Every day I just try to resist them. I think that every day is a new day, regardless of whether it is New Year's Day or not. 
Bad habits are hard to break. The best thing is never to start any bad habits. I don't know if my brother will ever stop biting his nails, but I know that each January he intends to stop. Maybe one of these New Year's days he'll get over that habit. If I could fly, I sometimes imagine what it would be like if I could fly like a bird. Just imagine what it would be like to soar into the sky, flying high above the trees. You could stand on high rooftops and never be afraid of falling. You would see so many things as you flew over rooftops and forests. You would feel incredibly free as you traveled from place to place, not bothered by road signs or traffic jams. If I could fly like a bird, I would start from my backyard and travel through town. I would look down on the houses and factories. When I got tired, I would land in a field and take a nap. I would travel above rivers and follow them as they wound along and emptied into lakes and oceans. I would fly above parks and I would call out to the children as I flew high above them. I would dip and dive as I flew. I would soar up high and dive down low, so that I could almost touch the treetops. Have you ever flown? I know that you can't fly like a bird, but you might have taken an airplane ride. When you're in an airplane, you pass through clouds. It is exciting to take an airplane ride. I love taking airplane flights. I like to look down at the earth. When you are up that high, everything below you looks tiny. That's the closest I'll get to flying like a bird, but I can still use my imagination and spread my wings and soar high above the world just like a bird. What I look for in a friend. What is it that makes somebody your friend? Some people are nice and you have fun with them. Some people are nice to talk to, but they don't become special to you. Some people become very close to you. Those people are the ones who become your good friends. Did you ever wonder why certain people do become your good friends? Friends usually have something in common. Often, friends enjoy doing the same things as each other. Maybe they like the same sports or the same music, or maybe they can even talk about problems or schoolwork. Friends usually find a common bond. Friends share ideas and listen to each other. Sometimes people who don't have similar interests even become friends. You can learn a lot from a person who likes different things than you. The most important thing about friends is that they must communicate with each other. A good friend is a person who takes the time to listen to the other person. One of the most important things that I think a friend should have is a sense of humor. I like to laugh with my friends. I like to feel comfortable around my friends. It is nice to be able to talk and laugh with people who have similar interests. It is nice to share things with people and learn about their interests. You become a better person if you are able to learn things from others. Life is a journey. On that journey, you meet many people. Some of those people will change your life. You have to choose your friends with care. A good friend is worth more than all the gold in the world. A good friend will make your journey through life more pleasant. Make friends along the way, and the path through life will be very rewarding. A funny thing happened on the way to school. Last Friday, it was very windy. I was walking down the street with my friend John. We were having a difficult time walking against the wind. The wind was pushing against us, and we felt the force of it pressing against us. We even had a hard time breathing. We were walking slowly. We watched the leaves as they danced and twirled in the wind. We watched a plastic bag as it flew by us. We saw a little boy whose baseball cap flew right off his head. His cap flew along the sidewalk, and he had to chase it. He finally caught it, and he held it in his hands tightly after he got it back. The trees were swaying frantically. Their branches swished and waved in the wild wind. John and I were hit by flying bits of paper and leaves. We laughed when a garbage can lid rolled along and hit John in the leg. We saw another garbage can rolling along the road as if it was alive. Everything was moving because of the wind. 
Then the funniest thing happened. I wasn't paying any attention, and a paper bag came flying up the street toward us. It hit me right in the face and covered my whole face. At first, I didn't know what had happened. I was blinded. I couldn't see where I was going. I stopped and held out my hands. When I stopped, the bag fell off my face. I looked at John. He was laughing very hard. He was laughing so hard that tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said that I looked very funny with the brown paper bag stuck to my face. I started to laugh too. We laughed about it all the way to school. John said that he wished he had a camera. He would have taken a picture of me with a bag on my face. Advice. Sometimes my mother gives me advice. She tells me to save my money for a rainy day. She says that I should eat my vegetables if I want to be strong when I grow up. She says that you reap what you sow. I didn't know what that one meant, so I asked her. She said that if you are good to people, they will be good to you. If you do bad things, then bad things will come back to you. My mother is always giving me advice. She says that a penny saved is a penny earned. I am still thinking about that one. Some of these things are difficult to understand. My mother is very wise. She says that she has learned from her mistakes. She tells me that she would like me not to make mistakes, but she says that everyone does make mistakes. The important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. My mother says that nobody is perfect. My mother tells my sister that time is precious. My sister wastes time, and my mother doesn't like that. My mother tells me to be true to myself. She says that I should not follow the crowd. I should listen to my own conscience and do what I think is right. She says that it doesn't matter if you fail at something. The important thing is that you try. If you've done your best, then that is all that matters. I listen to my mother. I think she gives very good advice. My mother has a lot of common sense. I hope I am as wise as she is when I have children of my own. Sometimes I wish that she would not give me so much advice. I think that I know what I'm doing, but in the end, I always remember what she has said, and I try to live by the standards that she has set for me. Take the advice that your parents give you. They only have your best interests at heart. A trip to the hospital. I have to get my tonsils out. I'm not really happy about it, but I'm tired of being sick and having sore throats. I have to go to the hospital two hours before my surgery. My mother will go with me. The nurses will take my temperature and check my blood pressure. They will make sure that I am ready for my operation. I will be dressed in a white gown and I will be wheeled down the hall to the operating room. I can't have anything to eat or drink for a long time before my surgery. My mother will walk down the hall with me. Then she will wave goodbye as they wheel me into the operating room. The doctor and the nurses will be busy in the operating room. They will be getting ready to perform my surgery. The doctor will say hello to me and tell me that he is going to put me to sleep. He will put something into my arm. He will tell me to count backwards from ten. I think that I will only say ten, nine, and then I will be fast asleep. I won't be awake for the surgery. When I wake up, I will be surprised that the surgery is over. My throat will hurt, and I probably won't feel very good. My mother will be there with me. The nurses will give me a drink and try to make me comfortable. I won't be in the hospital overnight. I will go home later in the day. My parents will have to make sure that I have a lot to drink. I can't eat any hard foods, or they will hurt my throat. I will sleep a lot because I will not feel very well for a couple of days. It won't take long before I recover from my surgery. Sometimes we need surgery to make us feel better. Hospitals can be a bit frightening, but the doctors and nurses are very nice, and their job is to make you better. What my cat did. One day I was sitting in a chair drinking a cup of tea. My cat came into the room and sat on my lap. She was quite content, and she sat there purring. My cat likes to drink water, and sometimes she drinks milk. 
I would never give her tea to drink. Cats just don't drink tea. We were sitting there quietly when suddenly my cat stood up. She was looking at something on the floor. She crouched down low and got ready to pounce. I saw what she was looking at. It was a huge centipede. I think that centipedes are ugly. They have many legs and they move very fast. I would hate to have one crawl over me. My cat jumped to the floor and she ran over to the centipede. She was incredibly fast. I was surprised that she caught the centipede. She put her paw on it and then she reached down and ate the centipede. The centipede must not have tasted very good. My cat got a funny look on her face, and she looked like she was trying to get a bad taste out of her mouth. I was thinking that I would be sick if I ate a centipede. My cat looked at me and jumped back up in my chair. She stuck her face in my teacup and took a big drink of tea. I was shocked. I had never seen a cat drink tea before. I think that the centipede must have tasted so bad that my cat just needed something to wash the taste out of her mouth. Guess what? I didn't finish my tea. I threw it out and washed out the cup. My cat has never had a drink of tea since that day. She has also never eaten another centipede. If a centipede walks by, she just pretends that she doesn't see it. If I was tiny. Imagine what life would be like if you were two inches tall. You would have to be careful that nobody stepped on you. You would have to watch out for cats, dogs, and birds. It would be very dangerous, but just think of the things that you could do. You could live in a dollhouse or even a shoebox. You could use a bottle cap for a plate. You would have to wear doll's clothes. A stamp would make a lovely picture to hang on your wall. You could hide in a mouse hole or a drawer. You wouldn't need much food. You could probably live comfortably on the crumbs that people would leave on the table. A thimble would make a good cup. If you went outside, the grass would seem like a jungle. An insect would be huge and frightening. A puddle would seem to be an ocean. You could cross the puddle in a paper cup and use a spoon for an oar. A matchbox would make a good bed with a handkerchief as a bedspread. You'd brush your hair with a toothbrush, but you'd never find anything small enough to brush your teeth with. You could take a ride on the back of a mouse. You wouldn't find any books that were small enough to read, but you might read the back of a pill bottle. You could ride in a toy car and have a soup bowl for a swimming pool. A leaf could be your umbrella, and a mitten would make a great sleeping bag. If you used your imagination, you could think up something to use for almost all your purposes. Being small might be fun, but then again, it would be frightening. I'd be afraid of my pet cat. I wouldn't want a book to fall on me. I would be afraid of being swept away by a big gust of wind. I think I'd rather be my size. If I were a giant, if I were a giant, I wouldn't be able to fit in my house. I'd have to live in a building that had a high ceiling, but I'd probably have a hard time getting through the door. I'd have to make my own clothes, but where would I get a giant needle and thread to sew with? I couldn't ride in a car or a plane. I suppose I would just have to take giant steps to get from place to place. I would have to be very careful not to step on anybody or anything. When I talked, people would cover their ears. My voice would sound very loud to them. I wouldn't find shoes to cover my feet. I wouldn't find a knife and fork to eat my dinner with. I might have to use a rake as a fork. My dinner would be huge. What would I cook my dinner in? I certainly wouldn't find an oven big enough to put my dinner in. If I sneezed, it would be like a hurricane. If I fell down, it would be like an earthquake. I wouldn't have any friends because everyone would be too tiny for me to talk to. I think that being a giant would be very lonely. I couldn't have just one apple. I would have to have a lot of apples to fill me up. I would have to drink gallons and gallons of water to quench my thirst. I could never relax under a tree. I would be taller than all the trees. I don't think that being a giant would be fun. I won't ever make a wish to be a giant. I would rather be my height. I'm very happy the way I am.